probably remember one D.L. Hughley joke, and it was from a special he did in the middle of the 90s where he was talking about Kirk Franklin, and he was like, man, Kirk Franklin gonna mess around and curse on stage one of these days. Pretty funny stuff, but I don't remember like anything else that he's done i don't like not that he's done i just don't remember more of his jokes like that but he has fan base all of the good stuff he's been on cnn um since then he's had his own show none specials but it seems as if you know trump's presidency and after the obama administration he's another one of these brothers quote unquote because i don't know his lineage um that cries about you know black victimhood and black victimization right and so on facebook he posted this interaction between this handsome young man right here and the police and he had a little commentary i got some commentary so let's check this out hold on let's let's go through his first there's there's a lot going on in this video should he have complied yes so boom that's where the whole thing ends for me you know the entire situation escalated when the cop reached in the car, grabbed his seatbelt, and pulled his gun. Weed or not, that man was visibly in fear of his life. Up to that point, there was no reason to pull the weapon. None. See, here's my problem. Is that people, entertainers in particular, feel like they can do police job. You know? Like, everyone feels like they can, they, like, they know how they'd react in that situation or in that scenario. When I can guarantee you, it'd be different if it were you. Like everyone, it's really good to look at a situation from a distance and be like, oh man, well, you should have did this, should have did this, should have did that. But the police, they don't have that kind of time. And honestly, there's not a lot of train. There's not too many training um, seminars that you can go to that can that can really teach you how to react in that slot of time. So let's go through this video and then I'll finish up the rest of what he has to say. Okay, so there was a bit of a flash right there because I like I'm not seeing the escalation because you see there's an edit. There's uh, some time that was taken away from this interaction, and I don't know what happened in that interaction. I know what he's trying to do right now is to spark that black and mild so the scent of bud isn't coming out of the car but you see how he's a bit more how he's far more animated than he was in the beginning right i mean this, like because in dl's mind that the situation escalated when the when the cop puts his hand in the car but as you see the demeanor of this gentleman change yeah, the cop's going to be a bit more on edge because the cop, like, the cop was actually rather relaxed when he asked him about, hey, is there any reason I would smell weed in the car, you know? More than likely, he probably would have been hit with a fine or something like that, but the, it's the, all in this gentleman's reaction because you see him getting more animated and getting more aggravated. Okay, so you see his hand right there. You see him reaching... Like, he's reaching out. Now, to be fair, the officer should have ordered him out of the car immediately. If he if he smelled the scent of weed and he felt like he had him on something like that, he should have let he should have said, hey, out of the car right now. He should have stepped back and said, can you please come out of the car? He shouldn't have reached into that car like that. I will 100 percent agree with that. But like we saw the guys, the guys at um, irritation level in his um, at in his uh, aggressiveness, they upped as well. So now you're in a situation right now where the gentleman is reaching out and trying to pull at the cop. And yes, the cop shouldn't have pulled in for that seatbelt. But I mean, seriously, we got all this terrible training all the way around. See, now he's freaking out because, you know, the gun's on him. But if you if the gentleman had remained calm, because that's the most important thing in dealing in any situation is remaining calm that's it if he'd remained calm like got out like you know what because i don't know the circumstances in this gentleman's truck so he may have some pot on him or you know anything else like that if he didn't shoot hop out and say go ahead you can look all you want you ain't gonna find nothing right but no he decided he wanted to be you know wanted to go um back and forth and wanted to actually reach for the cop and at that moment 
the cop is freaking shook and so yeah the cop had every like even though the cop never should have um reached in that car for the seatbelt, he should have ordered the man out once the gentleman starts reaching at him yeah cop cop is cop's gonna be shook But that's the thing, you sitting there whining and crying about how you didn't do nothing. What you do is you say, you, you put your hands outside of the car, you open your door, you, you, you just follow orders from that point. When you got a gun on you, okay? And guess what? This I, I kind of feel like this goes for any situation where there is a firearm directed directly at you. Whatever you want at the moment, by all means, I got you, okay? <laughs> I'm going to take care of him calmly, take care of him, but he, the, but the guy... This is just a bad situation all around because the you know, the young gentleman right here is just freaking out instead of, you know, calmly doing as told. And he's he's still sitting there. Crying. This is like a good what, 12 seconds where he's sitting there just freaking out and crying. It's like, bro, put your hands outside the freaking car. That's it. That's all you got to do is just put your hands outside the car. And okay, officer, whatever you need from me, all right. But him, I'm pretty sure there's probably some bud in that car. If if he gonna freak out like this way, there's probably some bud in the car. But either ways, I don't know what state they're in, so it like the the charges vary. The the, the charges wildly vary. But this situation was not was was bad from jump. Neither one of these gentlemen are in a are are in the best light here. Y'all see what's wrong with this, right? Like y'all, y'all see what's wrong with this, right? Instead of listening to the cop, y'all see, y'all, we know what's about to happen. Honestly, I'm not gonna play, play the rest of this because you know what happens next. You reached again. You reach for the, and this is what pisses me off. This is where I really feel like fathers are necessary because. If you have, if you're, if you're used to dealing with authority, I, I mean, I don't know this, this young gentleman's background or anything else like that, but I do know that if you have that authority figure in the house, you you know how to deal with authority. You're way better with dealing with authority. If you're just growing up with your mom in the house, all you got to do is whine and cry a little bit and you get your way. I've seen it happen a ton of times. And that's not to say with all moms, that's the case. Cause I've seen some of these tiger moms that are nuts, but Ultimately, this uh, this didn't have to happen, and this young gentleman is just as bad is in just a bad a light as the officer. Actually, a worse light because he should have just did what he was told. So I'm not playing the rest of this. Um, let's let's read the rest of uh, DL's quote here, and then we're gonna finish this one on up. Oh, okay. Believe it or not, that man was visibly in fear of his life, but so was the cop. Like he reached out the first time. You know, I mean, <laughs> and we got like a good solid 30 seconds of him trying to talk to this guy and tell him, hey, hey, hands up out the car, hands up out the car. And the guy keeps reaching for him. Up to that point, there was no reason to pull that weapon. None. You're not a cop, DL. I don't know your educational background. I sincerely doubt it's in criminal justice or law or anything else like that. You're just looking at this from the, oh my goodness, my black people, we such a victim um, mentality. And no, nah, we, we can't afford to look at things like that. <clears throat> For those of you who will make the argument that he should have complied with direct orders, such as me, black men are shot and killed by police in overwhelming numbers for less. You're right. So as soon as he had a gun on him, his happy ass should have hopped up out that car. But no, he wanted to sit there and argue. He wanted to sit there and be combative. You don't be combative with somebody that has a firearm pointed at you, okay? <laughs> While there are endless videos of white men bashing cop car windows, physically fighting officers, knocking officers out, and no weapons drawn. This is DL, okay. Okay, golly, DL Hughley. This is, it, 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 there, I'm sorry, he's not a victim in this situation. He did this to himself. Plain and simple, but for some strange reason, oh, he's a black man, so oh, the cop is automatically in the wrong. There's no reason for that. Yeah, there was plenty of reason because the, the guy had reached out for him. Granted, the cop should have never reached in that truck. He should have ordered the man out. 
He should have stepped back and ordered the man out, even after his reaction to the hint of weed thing. And then there's that little flash there. Remember, there's that flash. We There was an escalation there that we didn't even get to see. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to bring this video to an end because it just irritates me how there's this urge for people to, oh my goodness, we have the internet now, so we have to show every time that there's a police altercation. And when you show it, it's like, well, yeah, if the dude had done what he was told, he'd have been all right. I mean, he probably still would have went to jail because I couldn't tell you what was in that car. But the situation one ended in such a tragic manner that it, that, it, that it did. Right or wrong. So, all the internet stuff. Like it if you liked it. Dislike it. Not scared of you. Sub. If you enjoy my fantastic voice, share because sharing is caring and speak. Let me know. What do you think? Was this something do you think like me? Do you think this is something that was very easily avoidable? Had the young man just kept his own cool and kept his calm? Do you believe such as I do that this has something to do like there's the fatherlessness that is throughout our communities now? It seeps and in, seeps into these types of situations where these guys just don't know how to deal with authority. Let me know what you think in the comments and until the next video.